Hi, this is Gail with Burning of Naperville and yes, it's June and it is fat quarter of the month time. So this month we thought we would go a little daring and we are doing the by Annie's Easy Does It bag, which I think looks like a little dop bag or something for aftershave or whatever. And then naturally we should give it like a little masculine spin it's gonna to go together just like Annie's instructions and I'll kind of give you a little few tips on that because you know we always do an extra handout that goes along with this video which you can find in the description of the video but this month's big twist that we've put on it here at Bernina of Naperville is we are gonna just start sewing a bunch of fabric together from this kit to make an 18 by 21 piece of fabric that will then be quilted and then quilt it again from the back with a technique where you put heavy thread in the bobbin, which is called bobbin work, but it's also like couching. So we're gonna be using some heavier threads. We're gonna be using some soft and stable. We're gonna use all the stuff to make this really cute project and bag to hold, honestly, whatever you wanna hold in it. <laughs> Let's get started. So here's our project package this month. You might notice it feels a little different because the Easy Does It pattern is in here. Now this is a By Annie's pattern. And if you've never done a By Annie's bag pattern before, this might just be a little bit of baby steps towards making one of the larger bags. I will tell you that we are playing with these fabrics. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own fabric from some of the selections from this month's fat quarter pack and we're going to piece it wacky zany whatever and then we're going to follow the instructions in the handout so let's start with what we're going to put aside for the lining for the binding and for the handles so naturally with my aging eyesight I want to pick the lighter fabric for the lining so I'm going to put this aside and then typically I like to have a more solid color for my bindings. So I'm gonna put this one aside for the binding. And then now here's our little dilemma here. We can make the handle of the bag out of any of these fabrics because I'm sure I would have a four inch strip left over that I can cut the handle from. So I'm not gonna make that decision right now. So what I'm gonna do is cut each of my fat quarters, kind of fold them like this. This is a fat quarter that's been folded. And you know, I'm a fan of cutting off the selvage edge and saving them for other projects. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna stack everything together and cut like a couple two inch strips, then a four inch strip, and then a one inch strip. And then if I need more, I can come back to it later. And I'm going to shuffle this around and mix it up in a paper bag. And I have one rule. I can only put it back if I draw the same fabric. Today we're working on the Bernina 735. And this is an amazing machine because it's got that nice large touch screen that we like. It's got foot recognition. You can see here I'm using the number 37 and that's right. It's a regular 37. It's not a 97. It's not a 97D. It's not a 37D. This machine doesn't have dual feed and this machine doesn't take coated feet and that's because it's got these little narrow feed dogs that a lot of quilters and piecers like because it really gets the foot, the little narrow foot, perfectly engaged on those feed dogs. Now, I use this as a backup machine. I supplement some of my other machines with this one, but I just wanted to show you the B735 today because we have them on special. These machines we actually package exclusive to Bernina of Naperville with the 37 patchwork foot that gives you the quarter of an inch and then we also pack it with a walking foot because it doesn't have dual feed you're getting a removable walking foot which is the dual feed 
and also the Bernina Stitch Regulator. Now this machine is also available with and without embroidery. Now I'm just finishing up sewing the first two pieces that I grabbed out of that bag. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of pressing right now, but I'm just sewing my first two pieces together. Now I'm gonna grab another piece out of my bag and then I'm gonna take this over, press it and chop it up again. Because I'm going for something really flat, I pressed my seams open. And this time, what I wanna do is just randomly cut. And if you wanna make sure that you're cutting straight, you can still use your rotary cutter and ruler, but I'm just gonna make a weird diagonal line on here. And I'm not even paying attention to the line. And then if you wanted, you could cut another angle or whatever, but what I'm trying to do is just have a little fun here. So I think I'm going to add some more strips onto this. Okay, so I'm gonna take one of those diagonal lines here and add this piece that I just pulled out of my bag. And it's not that important that you use a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this because we're chopping it up, we're pressing it, it doesn't matter. Even if you were more comfortable using your standard foot that comes with the machine, that number one reverse pattern, you could certainly do that. And you can give it a little finger pressing or just push it over there like that. And now I'm gonna be extra creative and sew a long piece against the edge here, like this. There's no right or wrong way to do this, everyone. All right, we're gonna take it back, press it, and chop it again. All right, so this is a weird little shape. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to cut this even with my straight edge. Ta-da! And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. Isn't that lovely? Now, what would be fun to do? Let's see here. It's all about playtime. I think I'd like to sew this piece to this piece. So that means that rather than cutty, cut, cut, and sit and cut and whatever, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this right now. I know that you're thinking this, so let me just tell you that I can read your mind. How big are we trying to grow this piece? The size of a fat quarter, 18 by 21. So we're gonna have a little bit of piecing to do to get this that size, but I mean, this is really, really, really fun and it doesn't require a bunch of mind thought and it doesn't require a bunch of thinking. Just randomly do it is my best advice. All right, so there we have a piece. And now I think there's another way to do clever things with this. And that would be to just stitch something down, flip it over and trim your seam allowances after. So let's just finger press our seam open since we made the decision 
to press our seams open to keep everything nice and flat and make it kind of look like one cohesive piece. Obviously, I'll steam this later, but I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here and see how this kind of sticks out like this. I'm gonna take this piece and line it up with one of our original angles and piece this together. And then I'm just keeping everything straight, letting the fabric just lay down there like so. And you can see that piece is starting to show under there, but don't worry. So we can just trim that piece off, press our seams open, and now we've got some other bits where we can either stitch down this way or keep building rows after this. So let's go press. All right, so the seams are all pressed. And now I have, remember this piece that I cut off earlier? I am going to put this like right there, but I need to add a few more strips to the bottom of it so it'll be the same size. So I'm just gonna take this piece and pull a strip. Here's one, and I'm gonna sew it to the side of this. Then I'm going to add another piece. Here we go. And now I'm just gonna continue stitching this to that longer piece because I can use this later. Okay, we have to add a couple more strips. And look at that, I just happened to pull this out, but that's the rules, even though this one is the same as this, I can't put it back. By the way, we enforce rules kind of loosey-goosey around here, you know. So here's my piece that I continue to make a little bit wider. So now I'm gonna trim this off. And now I have one unit, this unit, and my other unit that I'm gonna keep building on again and again, just sewing willy-nilly until this piece measures 18 by 21. Now this piece is almost 18 inches, but not quite 21 inches in length. So I'm just gonna build another piece on the side here. Then I'm gonna leave it for a hot minute and now I'm gonna start building a little bit more on this so that I can kind of work in units and then eventually get like rectangular units that I can stitch together. And it's all done by just stitching, cutting it straight and pressing. It's, it's just, if it looks weird, just, just keep adding pieces. Sometimes, once this starts to get larger, we need to sew longer strips together, and that's what I'm doing right here. Now, of course, I can always cut them off later, but I just need a pretty sizable strip there. And now this strip that I'm working on here is rather angular, so I'm just gonna sew a strip down the side here but the piece is kind of getting wider. It's like a wedge. So 
when I sew some other strips, I'm not going to have them be as long as this one. I'm just going to sew this one until I run out of fabric strip here. So here's an opportunity for me to kind of straighten things up a little bit. So I'm going to fold it like I would be folding fabric to cut it straight. And I'm just going to kind of line this up at the fold like this. Make sure I have enough seam allowances. And there. See how I filled in that edge to make it a little bit straighter? And then I have this piece. So this piece is about 24 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim a little bit of this off. Go ahead and get that little piece. Okay, so now this is 21 inches long and about 11 inches deep. So I can almost put this other piece onto the other side, but I just need a little bit extra. And look at this, I just cut this off the end and it looks like this is gonna be perfect. So I have one last piece to sew here, then I'll press open and then I can sew these two pieces together and I'll be ready to quilt. Now, just to make things a little bit simple, I, my piece is longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to trim a few inches off. And I may or may not save this for something. So now I have pretty much a fat quarter size piece. So here's my fat quarter of lining. Now, what I want to do is cut some soft and stable that is going to be also 18 by 21 inches. So here's our piece basted together with 505 spray, the soft and stable, and the lining piece. Now, this is going to be the most fun. We're actually going to quilt this upside down because we're going to put some fancy dazzle in our bobbin and using that Bernina 735 we're going to use the red bobbin case which gives a looser tension onto this eight weight thread. Now one of the things I want to do before I put the cog and wheels on and this is in the presentation that you're going to find in the description of this video and on our Bernina of Naperville website under our fat quarter of the month. So I'm gonna cut each one of these out right on the edge of the black and white. That's one thing. And then they're gonna be traced onto our backing material or the backside here. However, what I wanna do first is just kinda of get a base quilting done on here. And I think I'm just gonna do free motion with my stitch regulator on my Bernina 735. And I'm just gonna do little waves, just little random waves with a neutral thread because it's all about layers and being fun. Then once I kind of get a good coverage with that, I'm going to turn my work upside down and trace the cogs that I will have cut out and then put my special thread in the bobbin for that. So let's just start quickly with the magic of video. Boom. Let's free motion quilt this.
Now a good practice before we place our fused or our 505 cog and wheels down on our fabric, I don't want to go through this whole thing and do this couching and all of that stuff only to cut half of it off. So I'm going to go ahead and take this piece and use our pattern to cut all of the pieces that we need. So for instance, we are going to need two six and a half by nine and a half inch pieces for the front and back. We need a side strip that's four and three eighths by 18, and we need zipper strips, two of those two and a quarter by 13. So let me go ahead and do that first. So here are our pieces. This is going to be the bottom piece like this. This is either the front or the back like this. And then these are the two pieces that are going to have the zipper installed. So let's make a conscientious decision here that we probably don't need to do any of the couching on these pieces because they're so small. So let's put these aside. So now let's turn this upside down to our lining and kind of determine where we would want to trace some cog and wheels. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a big one and that makes sense to kind of put it over here. Now I have to tell you, here's a confession. I like things to kind of go off the edge a little bit like this. So I'm going to just build my little cogs and then I've got another piece here that I'll retrace. If you cut all of those cogs that I gave you, you could lay them all out all at one time, but no biggie. So I'm going to just trace our circle and I'm going to do this to all of my pieces. And then in just a minute, you'll get to see what the tracings look like. So there you can see our bits. So we're going to quilt this. And I'm going to finish tracing this piece. And then add just a little bit to this piece. And I'll meet you at the machine. So in the top of my machine, I have a very medium gray that's fine. This is seraline thread and this is 60 weight thread. So I want something really fine in the top. So the first color in the bobbin for the bobbin thread that I'm using is this copper. This is Wonderfill Razzle and I'm going to place that in my red bobbin case. Now I want you to be mindful. My 735 or a 770 a 790 has a bobbin case like this. There is another one manufactured for the 710, the 750, and the 780. They're slightly different, so just make sure you get the right one for your machine. I'm gonna place this in the, in the case, and there's a couple different ways that you can thread this. We can just go straight through there, there's no tension, and then under this piece, just like that. If you can look here, this is just like the black bobbin, but without that flat spring right there. So we're just gonna be doing a straight stitch, but we always need to do a practice piece first. So I have a little swatch left over from our quilting piece that I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna pop this right into the bobbin area. Okay, so I'm taking my stitch regulator stitch to about 3.75 and now I'm simply going to heel tap to put my needle down and heel tap again to bring my needle up and raise my presser foot. Now we're going to carefully pull our bobbin thread up through the top. There we go. You can see that coming through there. And I'm working upside down just like I'm going to be working upside down on my real thing. But now let's just see how this works. And you'll see that this is a much longer stitch than the one we used earlier. But the thing of it is, with a heavier thread, you want a longer stitch length. So let's see. So there's our, our thread. Let's do a little bit more. 
This time, I'm gonna tighten my upper tension and I'm gonna to go to about five. So here was with a looser upper tension. You know, honestly, I think both of those tensions look good. I'm keeping it loosened just a little bit, but I love this. I think this looks really cool. All right, so we're ready to go, and I'm gonna take our piece, and I'm gonna just start on one of our cogs. Now, I will pull my bobbin thread up through the top and hold it, and I'm gonna leave my tails long in the beginning and long at the end, and then tie them off and bury them with a darning needle. That's just the best way to end this thread and start it. And I'm gonna use my stitch regulator to follow my blue lines and just pause at those corners of those cogs. All right, so once you have ended your piece, we need to pull that bobbin thread up again. So I'm gonna raise my presser foot and I'm gonna move, I'm gonna hold on to my upper thread. Then I'm gonna heel tap my needle, heel tap again, raise my presser foot again. And now once again, pull that upper thread to pull our bobbin thread up. And then you're gonna pull that bobbin thread up, leaving a little bit of a tail. And then we're gonna cut our upper thread as well. And then once again, this we're gonna handle after we do all of our cogs to tie off our threads. Look at that, how cute that is on the other side. I'm gonna repeat the process for the circle. And then let's look and see how many others we have on here. So we do the circle, and then I'm gonna do this large cog and center with this thread. Then I'm gonna to switch to my other bobbin and do the, meat, the little small one here, and maybe continue on to our other piece, just switching back and forth between our different colors. So when you end, you're just gonna take these tails, just like I showed you if you can't get your bobbin thread to come up at that last stitch, and you're just gonna tuck everything in between this quilt sandwich here, and we're gonna push that through. There we go. Same here.
So I wanted to show you something. Sometimes it's stubborn getting that bobbin thread pulled up from the bobbin. So when you end it and you can't get that to happen because there are too many seams, just simply get a darning needle and tuck this thread just anywhere under your piece in between that quilt sandwich. Just like that. It's finished. The couching is complete. It's just subtle, but I love it. It does catch the light very nice. And now there's a few things. We need to cut the rest of our pieces and just a little bit of housekeeping. For the handle, we're gonna cut two, four by five and three quarter inch pieces. And those pieces are gonna have some SF 101 behind them just to give them a little bit more oomph. We're also gonna cut uh, bias binding and side strip bindings. And then finally, you're gonna need to cut a two and a half inch circle to round the edges of your front and your back pieces. But I spare no expense when I do this. My can here, my 505 spray is exactly two and a half inches. So I just use my can and draw around the bottom with my water soluble pen. And obviously it's better if you do it from this side because the water soluble pen shows up. And then I'll cut this with my scissors. So this project requires a 15 inch at least zipper. And we carry the zippers many ways here at Bernina of Naperville. You can buy the Sally Tomato packages where it's like three yards of zippers and you get a bunch of, you know, the normal zipper heads. But we also sell zipper heads individually and this particular color by the yard and this particular color by the inch. So 15 inches plus the lock and the key. I thought it kind of went cute with this steampunk theme. So what I'm gonna do is take this zipper and I'm gonna just go ahead and open it. And I also wanted to let you know that it's okay to mix your metals because I picked this gunmetal and then I wanted the uh, rose gold, because it looks copper, to show up right on the zipper to give it some extra pizzazz. So we're gonna take our piece and put it in this direction on our zipper jig. Then the idea is to come at this thing like you're making a V and pull it through. And there's one. Now the heart's gonna go on the other side. And the only thing that makes this weird is that you really, when you're doing a double-ended zipper, you have to really make sure you get everything perfect when you line it up, because you don't want to slide that on there unevenly, but see how cool that came out? And now we have our little lock and key here. So when we put our zippers on, I'm gonna use my quarter inch foot, and I'm just gonna stitch along this edge here. Then I'm gonna use my scissors to trim away my seam allowance of my piece. And that's so once we stitch, we're gonna fold this under and then we top stitch. And if you trim some of the excess away, your raw, your raw edge is gonna be encapsulated in the zipper tape. I've loaded black Aurifil thread in the bobbin and I've got the black Aurifil thread in the top. This is the 50 weight thread. And now here is my, the lining side and the main fabric side. So obviously the main fabric side is gonna go on top or touching the zipper like this. So I'm gonna center that zipper in there. And just to make things a little bit easier to stitch. Now remember, this is a 15 inch zipper. So we're gonna trim a little bit of this, but we need that extra length. So I'm just gonna stitch on the zipper. just so I can undo my zipper head without it falling off again, just like that, see? And we'll do the same thing over here. It's just a little basting stitch. It's gonna be cut off, so it doesn't have to be beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this 
line it up in the middle like this and I'm gonna stitch using a quarter of an inch or maybe, you know what, I'm gonna go with my foot right up against this zipper tape, just like that. Now, an important thing that you have to be mindful of is attaching the other side so that it's totally the same starting point. And so I do that by just lining up the piece like this and then measuring and make sure that both pieces are the same size, which indeed they are. And so now we're gonna stitch again with our quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then if you need to, at this point, you can raise your foot and unzip it. Because now we know that we're, we're right. Okay, so now we're going to trim that extra batting away and come back and top stitch. Now, I like to do this from the, the wrong side. So we're just gonna fold this over, letting our foot hold this down. And we're gonna stitch really, really, really close to the edge of that zipper tape. And I have elongated my stitch length to 3.35. And then the top stitching looks pretty good from the back, there, and here. There is not a lot of hocus pocus making this handle. I put the SF-101 on it, and then I folded it and folded it again so that that four inches folds down to one inch per the instructions. And then I'm just simply gonna take the folded edge and line it right up to the inside of the toe of my quarter inch foot. And yes, I could use a number 10 edge stitch foot for this, but honestly, this is just a wee piece and it's perfectly fine, exactly the way it is. There's our top stitched handle that gets put aside for just a minute. And now these are our binding pieces that are gonna cover this raw edge of our zipper after we stitch it. So this is our bottom piece. This is the four by 18 inch piece and it gets stitched short sides together to our zipper strip using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. See, that didn't take me long. So now I'm gonna trim the zipper, extra zipper off of here. So I want my zipper to kind of fold down this way. So I'm gonna stitch these bindings onto the zipper side like this. And then ultimately, this is just gonna roll right off like this. And we'll top stitch that down like that. Let's go over to the machine and see this. just like this, see? And that covers that icky raw edge and everything. And now we can top stitch this down and we're gonna stitch this 
putting that fold right up into the inside toe of our quarter inch foot. So now it's time to put the handles into position and I'm gonna base them on first. And honestly, you can put them right over the seam like this, or you could place them down a little bit. It's, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put mine right at the bottom of my stitching line here. And I'm gonna take a little bit less than a quarter of an inch seam allowance, just because I don't wanna see double stitching in there so can cut that side and I am putting handles on both sides of this bag now at this point it's important to find the center top and bottom and I'm folding so my handles are both across the street from each other like so and my seam there is in that spot so I'm gonna put a pin here, or I can mark with a water-soluble pen. So you're gonna mark that section there. Then this will be the bottom of the bag here. And we're gonna do this on both sides of this zipper strap piece. And then another thing that I like to do is once I find all of those pieces, I'm gonna line up those dots together to determine what the center of my bag is and it really is right where my handle is so the very center of my handle is like the center of the bag so i'm not going to put a pin there so once you've done that you're going to follow the same instructions with your front and back so we're going to fold it in half like this and we're gonna put a pin at the center and a pin at the center across the street from it. Then we're gonna fold those pieces together to find the center of the side. Once you have everything pinned, you're gonna take a top center of your strap and a top center of one of your main sides and you're gonna pin that together. Then you're gonna take your handle and pin that, then match the bottoms together, and then the middle of the handle again. And now it's just easing everything in so it lays flat because we're making a three-dimensional object, so there's gonna be lots of pinning and zhuzhing. And I am a pinner. A lot of you might like fabric clips, and that's fine if you like fabric clips. Go ahead and use those instead. But I just bend the you-know-what out of my pens, and that's how I get the best results. That's the way I've been doing it. That's how I like to do it. But I don't want you to hate me because I pin, because I am totally okay with you if you use fabric clips. That's how you're gonna get that rounded piece. I also find on this particular pattern, you don't really have to clip the curves. It's, it's pretty nice just getting it all in there nice and flat just by, you know, fluffing it around and wiggling it around with your, your fingers. On this little piece here, I just had to kind of stretch and distribute the fullness. There we go.
Now, even though I'm going to be having to turn this back out, I just like to open up everything, push it to the side, make sure that everything looks good on the bag before I put the last side on. But I like the way my handle looks. I like the way this looks. It's, it's coming together really nicely. So I just have to repeat exactly what I did with my pinning and my stitching. And then the final, final step is to go cut that 14 inch square of binding that we did, make our bias binding and sew it into these pieces that we just created. And that's because we want these raw edges to be covered. So we're gonna sew a binding around this that will encapsulate that raw edge and make everything look neat and nice. So after you have stitched all four of your binding pieces together, you're gonna fold them in half like this. And then you're gonna take your raw edge. I'm gonna start with a little bit of a tail left because we're gonna have to join our pieces. So now we're gonna line this batting up right up to our raw edge and just stitching around the bag again. I don't pin at this point. But it's important that this binding is cut on the bias so it can stretch around these corners of the bag. And you're gonna do this on both, uh, both of these seams. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is a little bit different than how I would do it for a quilt because let's just face it, it's the inside of a bag, everybody. I'm gonna shove my tail into this binding like this rather than doing that weird thing. And you know what I mean by the weird thing. Okay, so back here, see how like I just went ahead and took out one of our little bias piecing pieces there. And now I'm pulling my, my piece. I wanna open it up there just a little bit more. I'm pulling this piece, kind of stretching it to get it into position there. And now, I can get everything nice and and tucked in just there. And now I'm gonna finish this seam off. Everything is pretty and happy. There we go. Now, once upon a time, I was a chicken, and I would have sewn this binding over by hand, but <laughs> I am not a chicken anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to tuck this around and stitch it by machine. So you just bring this binding over and stitch it, and I'm gonna stitch from the top like this on my folded edge. And you're just gonna cover that seam line as best you can. It takes a lot of moving and shaking. Look at that, look how pretty that is gonna be. All right, so once you get your binding sewn on there on one side. You're just gonna rinse and repeat for the other side and then your bag's gonna be done. So once your bag is all put together, I like to go to the iron and just kinda push those seams in, get that binding edge just kind of sunk into the corners there and you'll see how that will amazingly start giving this piece some shape and you can fill it with all of the aftershave and 
Axe Body Spray, Old Spice, Beard Oil, whatever, because you know what? This might have a little bit of bling, but I think it's just the thing for dad for Father's Day. What do you think? Well, here it is. What do you think? Did we capture the essence of steampunk? Do any of you really know what steampunk is? Well, it's kind of like if the Industrial Revolution would have never happened and we all relied on steam to power things and there's a lot of uses with clocks, there's uses of copper and all kinds of like gears and things like that. So one of the things that I might remember from way back in the day that was kind of steampunk style was Wild Wild West. It's a movie. You can look it up. I think it's the late 90s or something like that. Also the Sherlock Holmes movies with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law, that's done in the steampunk style. But nonetheless, it is like a phenomena you might liken to enthusiasts of the Renaissance Fair or potentially um, cosplay crossovers and things like that. So, co so steampunk is kind of its own style and you might even see like Harry Potter steampunk, you could see uh, Superman steampunk. I mean, there's just an endless things that people have done with this phenomenal Victorian inspired, mysterious, time traveling, you know, all the things. But nonetheless, regardless if you're into steampunk or you just want to enjoy some nice, darker, edgier fabrics, maybe you'll take advantage of our fat quarter of the month, pick it up. You know there's no commitment. You can just buy it once and then never be in the club again. Or once you do sign up, you're going to get a monthly invoice for all of our different projects that we have every month of the year. The only thing is, is that we send you an invoice, but it's not billed automatically to you. It's up to you whether or not you want to buy it or not. So if you get the invoice and you don't pay it, you don't get the kit. And if you get the invoice and you pay it, we're going to send you a kit. It works like that. You sign up at BerninaofNaperville.com. All right, well, that about does it for this month. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this one and other tutorials, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>